Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of the new coaching series on the channel. Now, I wanted to switch things up a little bit with this series and make it different than my standard style of tutorial or tips and tricks video. So what I'm going to be doing with this series is actually taking a raw, unedited look at different pro players, and I'm going to be breaking down exactly what they do that makes them so good. So without any further wait, let's take a look at a squishy game, a ranked 3v3 game with him, Derek G and Kronovi, and see what actually makes this man so good at Rocket League. That was a nice starting kickoff. I like I like what Squishy did there. He didn't try to necessarily drive through the ball and flip through it to win the kickoff. He actually hit the ball and then rolled off it to the right, which is going to spit the ball back out into his corner and give his team starting possession. That was a real nice, real nice kickoff there. So unfortunately, Kronovi gets dunked on, but makes a nice recovery. Let's see what Squishy does. A lot of people will think Squishy is being dumb here, but I actually really like his movement around the field. Let's, let's take a look at this again. So after Kronovi wins this ball, Squishy sees his two teammates to his left. So he knows he's the man on the ball. He has to be the one to pressure it. But the thing is, this ball is rolling away from him. So there's really no situation here in which Squishy is first to this ball. So what you'll notice he does that's different from a lot of other players is a lot of other players would see this guy jump up for the ball, and the first instinct they would have is, I gotta get up quick. I gotta try to dunk over this guy. I gotta try to win this ball forward. But no, Squishy is a lot more patient, and he understands that his role here isn't necessarily to win this ball, because this ball is too far away for him to win. Instead, what he's doing is he's sort of just applying pressure by being near the ball and forcing a hit out of the opponent. So after his opponent hits it, all he does is he sort of rotates out and he's he's just he's just causing disruption in the back line. He's just disrupting the other team's play and making it difficult um, for them to actually control the ball. So I really like what Squishy's doing here. Kenobi passes it up and nice, Squishy does a pass back. So just like from the start of the game, difference between this level of play and say gold play, platinum play, well, there's a lot of differences, but one of the key differences is these players understand the importance of having the ball. And they understand having the ball is so important that rather than Squishy playing this ball up the field, because he knows he doesn't have much here, he would rather send the ball to his own side of the field if it means his teammate can gain possession. And so this pass back is, is beautiful here because he knows the other team is all behind him. So passing back to Garrett here is, is the natural move for him. I'm sure he didn't even have to think about it. Unfortunately, the pass was a little too high. Um, not ideal, but so well. To be honest, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of this rotation. He, he kind of cuts, cuts forward a little bit here. But the only good news is he knows his teammate is to his right. So him cutting rotation here is actually acceptable. Um, I'm sure Squishy's processing these things like in, in his head, but after he hits this ball back, Kronovi is to his right, so him cutting rotation here is actually, it's not the end of the world. It allows him to get to the ball sooner, and there's no sort of obvious downside to it. I like Squishy's patience there a lot, letting Garrett go for the ball. Wow, that was beautiful. <laughs> Uh, ha half of this is just me watching Squishy and being in awe of his play, but this is this is a really nice play here. He, look what he does. He he sees this ball get sent into his corner, and he knows his team is pressuring up because they were on the offensive there. So he checks back. Look at that camera movement. It's like it's so natural for him. He checks back post to see if he has a teammate there, realizes there's no teammate, and then says, "Let let me do it myself." So he hits the ball up real softly catches himself on the wall, and then he knows he's the one who has to follow up this ball. So he gets a nice follow up and tips it over to his teammate who he like instinctually knows is there. It's, it's beautiful, beautiful to watch. This, this is another small detail that I love. So as he's pushing up here, he realizes he's last man back. So he's waiting here. I'm sure he wants to fly for this ball, but he only goes up for the ball after he sees Kronovi flipping back over on the right there. And that's just, it, it's beautiful awareness. 
So even though he loses his ball, it doesn't matter because Kronobi's back and Garrett's back and they should be able to alleviate pressure here. Good passing attempt by Kronobi. I like Squishy's patience here. He's just playing in the back. There's nothing he can really do other than guard net. <laughs> Make sure you do that one in your games too, guys. Make sure to drive backwards up the wall. If the ball's ever behind you, Make sure to drive backwards up the wall and then clear it to the opposite corner. That's what I would do there. Nice pass by Kronobi. Here's something I really like. I was coaching a player last night actually, and he has this terrible habit where whenever his boost drops below like 40 or 50 and he's on the offense, he will just dart back to his own corner and completely give up on the offensive attempt just so that he can have full boost. And something that you might not notice here that's beautiful about Squishy's play is he knows his team has pressure here. So even though he only has 34 boost, he's actually still posturing very aggressively and creating a strong threat as the middleman here. Um, and I think it's really important that you don't give up on offense like this, like see what Squishy's doing, even when you have low boost. Because the reality is 34 boost is still enough to make a big play. If the ball is sent middle, he can get up and score. So I really like him staying on the offense here and not giving up on this play, even though it's not perfect, even though he doesn't have 100 boost. So when Kronobi sends this ball here, he's actually still pressuring and he actually is forcing a save here. This is like that situation we were talking about earlier, right off the kickoff, where even though he's not hitting this ball, he's forcing the other team to give up possession. Let's see how he rotates around here. So this is a little bit of a strange position, but I like how he deals with it. A, a very good rule for rotating in threes is if you ever feel awkward or out of position, what you can do is just rotate off the ball. So he sees the ball's left here, he's low boost, he doesn't really have any threat here, he can't stop this offense. So what he does is he darts for the opposite corner. He goes around, he's looping around, and he's putting himself in a good position to be influential in the play later on. Even though he can't make much of an impact now, he's looping around, grabbing boost, and then getting around back post. I like that a lot. Once again, this, this positioning is beautiful. Something, even, even though Squishy isn't scoring here, even though we know he doesn't score here, his offensive pathing is just, it's just like, it's it's like second nature for him. It, it's it's beautiful. Look, look at how he's just driving around these small pads. He's just drifting around the boost, just collecting boost slowly, 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 waiting for the play to come to him. He's not rushing. He's not diving in on this ball. He knows he has Kronovi in the corner. He knows he has his other teammate back to the right. He sees Garrett G over there. And so he's just posturing right in the center of the field, creating a lot of pressure on this net while simultaneously picking up boost. This is exactly what you want to be doing if you don't know what to do when you're off the ball. If you ever don't know what to do, you want to position yourself in a place that creates threats that your team isn't covering. But while you're waiting for the play to unfold, you also want to keep your momentum going, keep collecting boost, and stay active. And he's doing a great job here of just pathing around, collecting boost, waiting, waiting, waiting. If this ball comes to the left side of the field, he's scoring. And th this offensive positioning is beautiful. They're just cramping the defense right now. And so them getting score out on, scored on here is, it's honestly inevitable. Let's see what Squishy does here. I really like how Squishy plays and that he's not always trying to make a like to hit a clip, right? A lot of his play so far in this game has just been him understanding what his role is in the play. And a lot of the time in threes, you're not going to be in the best situation to, you know, have all this space to make a play on the opponents to beat them all the time. And so what he does is he's just even even when he can't necessarily make a play, he's applying pressure. He's, whenever the other team has the ball, he's always right on top of them, forcing to give it up. And what it's doing is it's actually making his team so threatening constantly because the other team really never has control of the ball. Whenever they get the ball, Squishy is on top of them, forcing them to send it away. 
And so what you'll see is, th basically this whole game, Orange has been attacking. And really what that comes down to is just Squishy making these little threatening positional plays more than anything else. So let's see how he rotates here. This is actually a mistake. This is this is the first big mistake I see with uh, I've seen Squishy make, at least defensively. The one time he skipped out on rotating back post, it was okay because he knew he had a teammate behind him. But here, he is clearly going to be the first man back here. You see where Kronovi is? Kronovi cuts cuts up to the front post to try to interfere with his play, which is totally fine. But what that does is it makes Kronovi last man back. And so what Squishy has to be doing here is instead of the path that he takes, if I was coaching Squishy right now, and I'm sure he would tell you this too, he sees this ball. And so he's, he's a little greedy, right? When he sees this ball, he, he, he kind of switch over to none. Um, he kind of drifts towards it. He drives up the center of the net and he's kind of drifting towards the ball. But since Kronovi is already pressuring it, Squishy would have been much better off here maybe say picking up this boost then going one two back post that puts the whole net in front of him and gives them him the ability to clear the ball with momentum or, you know send it into the corner if there's a shot on net but instead you'll see the rotation squishy makes by cutting straight to the center here when the ball flies up he's actually he's actually kind of caught out here and luckily mechanically he's so strong that he can <laughs> he can drive backwards and aerial up to this ball before this guy can get there. But this is a play that shouldn't be this difficult for Squishy, right? This should not this should not be as difficult as, as it is for him right now. Luckily, he's very mechanically skilled, so his mechanics can compensate for his play. But I think a big takeaway from this play is if you don't have that mechanical skill, right? Which is 90, what, 8%, 99% of us, just rotating back post here, going boost, 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 back post, makes this whole play so much easier but okay you know they get they get out of it squishy's obviously a champ so let's see what happens next is he doubling this please don't double this oh my god I just want to see that again. That was so close. Oh, brutal. I like Squishy's patience here. I would have liked to see Kronobi go off that ball and let Squishy move up, but I mean, it's fine. I, I really like these micro camera movements that Squishy's, be, that Squishy's been doing. He always knows where his team is team is like like look at this he knows Kronobi's to his right okay so this ball spits up to the right he's like I know this is not my ball so he peeks his camera to the left checks on what Kronobi is doing knows Kronobi is going to be going for the ball and that's actually informing how he positions right um if Kronobi if he saw Kronobi going back then he would be pressuring this ball and his awareness is just like unbelievable every when, when you watch squishy when you watch pro players what you see is all the flashy things they do right you see how you know they he almost hits that double tap for example you know he see you see how he's in the middle of the net he backs up he flies up and he somehow makes it clear right but these are the things that actually enable him to play at the level he does right this these positional things these awareness things he always knows where his team is and so he's always in the right spot so this is, this is just beautiful positioning here even though the ball spits out to the left i love that he's playing back here after he checks and sees Kronovi go for this ball he knows he's last man back and so his posturing is he's not facing towards the play and he's not facing away from the play he's keeping his options open and, the, and this is just beautiful and here he sees garrett g in front of him this this is another minute thing guys but look as this play is unfolding, he paths along these boost pads. Look, he's picking up 12 boost. He sees the play go over there. He's picking up this boost. It's like these things are instinctual for him, and it's it, it's it's beautiful. Good defense there. Oh, that's that's a little bit of a scare, but they get away from it, and that's gonna be a goal, isn't it? Wow. 
Let's let's see actually what enables this goal to happen. So here, they're on the the other team's on the offense, right? There's a lot of pressure being applied. That's a really nice demo by TTG. After he hits the ball, he's rotating out. He picks up a demo on the way out. That's a beautiful rotation that a lot of you should try to incorporate into your game. If you're ever pressuring on offense after you make a hit, um, driving out through the goal is a great way to pick up a demo and rotate out at the same time. It's it's a very efficient play that a lot of I, that I see a lot of GCs doing. It's really good but it's actually what creates so much pressure here. Because once that demo happens, they don't have a goalie. And so Garrett G is panicking, getting back to net. Luckily he scrambles and makes like an, the, luckily this ball falls down right here. If it didn't fall down right there, they're getting scored on. Um, but the ball being so close to the net actually draws out the other team. Gets a double commit out of players that, even though these guys are such high level, the ball being so close to the net baits them both, both into double committing. So the takeaway here is, even when you're on offense, right? Try not to get baited into overcommitting. And this this is so, so hard to do, but it, it happens to everybody, right? Sometimes the ball's in front of your own net and there's no pressure on you, right? But just because the ball's so close to your net, you feel pressure to send it away. Or sometimes you're on offense and the ball's so close to their net that you feel pressured to dive in and score it. You really have to still use your head, even in these, you know, high pressure, near goal moments um and the other team getting baited forward here when they lose this 50 they have nobody back and a good player like squishy he's gonna punish them every time for it let's keep watching and and see what happens next it's a little miscommunication there squishy drives up for the ball not ideal but it's fine at the end of things Look at this. This, this mi These micro camera movements are beautiful. It's like, this is how Rocket League should be played. Whenever Squishy is in a weird place, right? He doesn't really know where he is. You, instinctually, he snaps his joystick over. Where is my team? All right, he identifies, oh, okay. Garrett's back post. I can rotate around. And it, 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 it's beautiful. Like, he, his awareness, his camera movements, and the information he's getting is allowing him to position himself well no matter the circumstance. And so what you'll notice is when you're watching Squishy, he never looks like he's awkward, right? If he's awkward, he's only ever awkward for a brief second because once he realizes he's awkward, he's checking his team. And then he's like, okay, now I know where I need to be. I'm gonna move there. He sends himself into open field and it's like, it, it, he's, a, he's enabling himself to, to make things happen here. It's beautiful. Don't mind that flight. It's it's this this was probably not necessary. Luckily, they're up two goals, so he's playing a little greedy. But he should know he's beat here really hard. And the reality is, there's a difference between applying pressure and forcing the ball over you, and just flailing at the ball. And it's it's a fine line, right? But once he sees TTG off the wall, it's obvious TTG is committed to this play. So squishy flying for this ball doesn't really produce anything. Whereas in the other plays, him pressuring being on the ball actually force the team to give up possession but you know that ttg is sending this ball down to your half whether or not you fly so he could have just as easily stayed on the ground here maybe tried to get a demo on mala down in the bottom right and uh rotate out but oh well he flies up luckily he has two teammates back so hopefully they can deal with this this pressure and yeah that, that's such beautiful defense L look at how look at how this team plays defense squishy is out of the play right so Kronovi and garrett g have to basically cover this attack, right? And, and look how they do it. The man on the ball, Kronovi, he's closest to the ball, he takes to the wall. So he's covering the high shot, and you have Garrett G in net covering all the shot options. And so the blue team really has no way to score this ball, right? Because if they send it over the net, Kronovi's got it, and if they put it on net, Garrett G's got it. So this is beautiful defense. And by the time they've done this, they've alleviated pressure. And I actually like Squishy's positioning a lot here. Oh my god, is that a goal? Oh, that was so pretty. So look, look at how this team counter counterattacks. So right now they know they're in an offensive position. So this is actually kind of lucky TTG interferes here. Um, but they're they're essentially splitting up on offense. L notice how they're all covering different parts of the offensive zone. And so it's giving Garrett an option, basically a read option, to pass it to whoever he wants. So Squishy's up to the right, Kronovi's up to the left. 
and they're basically they're they're setting up an open space to be the most threatening attackers they can be. And they almost get a goal out of it. That was really nice. I like Squishy's positioning a lot here again. No, notice, notice how he positions based on where his team is. When he is last man back here, until Garrett G is back, he's facing sideways, right? He doesn't commit to being on the offense here until he knows his teammate is behind him. And then once he knows Garrett G is behind him, he drives up and actually makes a play on the ball. <laughs> look, look, look at this. This is, this is so funny. This is how you know Squishy knows what he's doing. Squishy knows that his role right here as the man driving up here is 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 not even he, he he doesn't even care what this guy does with the ball it's hilarious he doesn't even care all he's doing is being a body here right this is something that we see him do all game but he is just being a body he just drives at this guy and says look i'm not even trying i'm not even trying to contest you i'm going for the quarter boost right this is this is actually kind of funny and he forces hampert to just send the ball back to his team send it to kernovi right and this, this is what Squishy is doing time and time again. He has such a high understanding of this game that he knows when his job is to win the ball and when his job is to regain possession, if you know what I'm saying. It's not just he's going up and trying to beat the opponent. He is literally letting the opponent give the ball to his team. And this is such like a high IQ play that it, it's just beautiful to watch because what, you, what you're probably noticing is Blue never gets to attack. They've had like two attacks this game and the attacks have been like 40, 40 seconds long in total. They've been on defense for like three minutes. Okay. And it all comes down to squishy controlling who has the ball. Like he is deciding that to, to let his team have the ball. And this is, this is, this is perfect. Let's see what he does here. Nice, he has, the, he has a little bit of space, so he goes for a play. Oh, wow, that was close. Okay, so here, <laughs> obviously, what we cannot take away from this play is, you know, ju ju just air dribble double tap into the net, right? That's not the takeaway. What the takeaway here is squishy Nosia space, so now he can go for a play on the ball, right? And obviously, not all of us are going to be able to make the same play that Squishy makes here, but the takeaway is when you have space, when the opponent gives you the ball like that, that's when you actually take possession. And so he does here is he plays close to the ball and he gives himself a ton of options. And then this is just, that's just nice to watch. Let's see what Squishy does here. <laughs> that read is just unbelievable. Like, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Like, I could never make a read like that. Like, I, how... Like he knows this ball is coming up here and then bouncing off the wall, so he like I don't even want to talk about it. What I'm noticing is Squishy is really never scared of the enemy team. Like even even when the opponents have the ball here, like he is at half because he knows Garrett's back and Kronovi's on the ball. Like he's he's just looking for demos trying to disrupt their offense. There's no fear at all. And to be honest, he's cutting rotation a little bit here, which is probably, I, I wouldn't tell you guys to position that same way defensively that he's positioning, but he can get away with it because his mechanics are top tier. Garrett's gonna send that up. So Squishy tries to tip it up for his team. That's nice. Oh my gosh. Oh my, oh my. Ooh. Please, I wanna see this again. They're just taking advantage of space. They know they have space here. They know the enemy team's rushing back, so they make a play out of it. Look at how they split up. It, it, it's like instinctual. It's like balls in the center. At, at the low ranks, most people would cluster on this ball. They'd all jump on this ball. But these guys have such an awareness of what's going on that it's like, no, we have the ball. We're going to split up. Kernovi goes to the left. Garrett goes to the ball. Squishy goes to the right. It's like, come on. You can't beat this. And then from there, it's right, it's just Garrett's making, he, it's a read option. It's like, look, you see the car coming from the right, Garrett's like, okay, then I'm going to pass to Kronovi on the left. And Kronovi gets the ball, it's like, oh, net's wide open. Put it far down. 
that's just wow. Once again, Squishy's getting some space, so notice how he plays close to the ball. Tries to make a play out of this. Doesn't get anything done, but Force is actually two onto the ball, so that's, that's not bad at all. Let's see what happens here. Uh oh. Oh wow, he split that up. I thought that was going to be another one. Kronovi almost gets the double, and oh my gosh, now they're just, <laughs> now they're just passing around, trying to style on these guys. See how long they keep it up. Wow. Okay, what a game. That was, that was impressive to watch. Okay, so now that we finished watching that replay, let's, let's talk takeaways. I mean, there are a lot of things from Squishy's gameplay that it's just like, He's just a tier above the rest, right? We, we can't all we can't all just decide to play like Squishy, but there are some parts of his game that I think we can all implement that will help us improve. So let's talk about takeaways from watching Squishy. I think one of the big takeaways, right? This isn't something that necessarily is going to come instantly, but if you can implement it in your games, I think will help you improve a lot. The first thing that I'm thinking about right now is understanding what your role is in the play in threes a lot i think the problem that people have and I, I do this too is they only challenge the ball when they think they can win right they only challenge the ball when they have 80 boost and they think they're gonna beat the opponent to it but what we'll see squishy do throughout the game is just he's just there to apply pressure right and so when you have two teammates behind you in threes i think the big takeaway from watching squishy's game is there is value in just driving at the ball, right? If you know you have your teammates behind you, just pressuring the ball and getting your opponents to give it up is really powerful. So I think that's something we can all put into our games. The second big thing that Squishy does right is this positioning based on where his team is. And even though we can't all have this perfect sense of where the field is and this perfect boost pathing that Squishy has, when Squishy's watching the play, it's like, oh my God, seeing him path around the field is just, it's beautiful. But what we can take away is trying to understand where our team is more. So I think something you can do in your games is if you ever feel out of position or a little bit awkward, do what Squishy does and actually just flick your camera around for a second. See where your team is, right? If you don't know where you're supposed to be, first figure out where your team is. And then once you know where your team is, you can figure out what empty space you need to cover, okay? And so even if you can't have, right? Even if you can't have perfect positioning like he does, I think just getting more information, right? Knowing where your team is, it's gonna naturally just put you in a better place to make plays happen. And there are a lot of other things I can talk about, right? Like back post rotation, Squishy. Squishy can cheat, right? Squishy can get away with rotating to the center of the net. I don't think most people should do that. I think most people should be rotating back post, um, doing a wide loop around because we don't now all have the mechanics to compensate. Obviously Squishy can be really aggressive on offense, right? Because he poses such a threat, okay? If the ball comes middle, him just being there is incredibly threatening and he know he can reach balls. But the big takeaways are, I think for everybody from watching this squishy gameplay is just one, stay on the ball longer. Like know when to win the ball, when your job is to win the ball and know when your job is just to apply pressure. Even if you have low boost, right? Like I think there's one great example towards the start of the game where they were on offense and even though Squishy had 30 boost, he was still sitting in the center of the field applying pressure because that was his job, right? That was the best thing for him to be doing. Sure, he could have gone and got a hunter boost, but that would ruin his offense. That would ruin his team's offense. And so he has that higher awareness to stay there even though it's not optimal for him because it's the best decision for the team. And then secondly, just with that positioning, if we can all look at our team a little more, if we can all get more information about what's going on in the field, no matter what your rank is, right? Even if you're in gold and your teammates are, you, you take a look at your teammates and you just laugh with where they're positioned, okay? At least you know, right? At least you know where they are. And so yeah, if we can get those two things down in everybody's games, I think we'll, we're gonna be a lot better off for it. But there you go, guys. That was episode one of taking a look at pro gameplay. Hopefully this was cool for you guys to see what was going on in my head when I'm watching Squishy, what I'm picking up on. Um, and hopefully you picked up on some of these things too and can start actually bringing them into your games to make you play a little more like Squishy. But yeah, 
That's all I've got for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to comment below with who you want to see next in the series. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you all in part two. I'll see you next time. Peace, guys.